Hey everyone, this video will be on the reactions of alcohols. The four reactions of alcohols you will be learning in the HEC syllabus are combustion, dehydration, substitution with a hydrogen halide, and oxidation of alcohols. The combustion reaction of alcohols is covered in a separate video. Dehydration of alcohols converts an alcohol into an alkene. This is classified as an elimination reaction because the water molecule is removed from the alcohol in order to produce an alkene. Elimination is the opposite to addition. In this case, dehydration is also a reversible reaction, whereby the reverse reaction is hydration of alkene, where the water molecule is added to the alkene to reproduce the alcohol, which is a reactant of dehydration. Both dehydration and hydration require the presence of an acid catalyst, usually sulfuric acid. However, the difference here for dehydration is that the concentration of sulfuric acid is usually a lot higher than what's required for hydration. Additionally, the forward reaction that is dehydration is endothermic. So using your knowledge of reversible systems and Le Chatelier's principle, by producing heat and having a high temperature, we can increase the production of the alkene by shifting the equilibrium to the right-hand side. Here's an example of dehydration. Dehydration of 2-butanol in the presence of an acid catalyst produces 2-butene and 1-butene as the bond between the hydroxyl group and carbon can either fall into the second position to produce 2-butene or fall into the first position to form 1-butene. In both cases, as you can see, a water molecule is removed from the organic compound. In this particular dehydration example, 2-butene is a major product, whereas 1-butene is the minor product. The production of major and minor product in an elimination reaction is explained by Sazer's rule, which states that the major product is the one where the resultant double carbon to carbon bond is formed in a more substituted position. Structurally speaking, what this means is that in the major product, the double bond prefers to be in the middle of the organic compound rather than in the terminal end, as you can see in one butene. Dehydration of alcohol is a very important reaction as the formation of alkene is a very powerful reaction. As we discussed in the video on reactions of alkenes, alkenes are useful for many different reactions, such as hydrohalogenation and halogenation to produce halogenated alkanes, hydrogenation to produce alkanes by themselves, hydration to reproduce alcohols, and more importantly, polymerization to produce polymers, which will be discussed in a later video in the module. The next reaction is substitution with hydrogen halide. As the name suggests, in this reaction, by adding hydrogen halide to an alcohol group, the halogen atom is able to replace and substitute the alcohol function group in the alcohol molecule. This reaction requires the presence of an acidic salt as a catalyst, commonly what we use is zinc chloride. In this example, substitution reaction between one propanol and hydrogen chloride produces one chloropropane and water molecule. The most important feature of this reaction is that the position of the halogen in the product is always in the same location as the position of the alcohol in the reactant. Oxidation of alcohols is a complex reaction as it produces various other functional groups. Oxidation of primary alcohol produces an aldehyde, which then is further oxidized to produce a carboxylic acid. Oxidation of secondary alcohols produces ketones. And finally, oxidation of tertiary alcohols has no reaction whatsoever. It is very important for you to understand and be able to differentiate between the different structures of alcohol, primary, secondary, and tertiary, as their oxidations have various outcomes. In contrast to what you've learned about oxidation and reduction in year 11, oxidation states of organic compounds are calculated very differently. The following rules are applied when determining the oxidation state of a carbon atom. Every bond between a carbon and another carbon does not change its oxidation state. 
every bond between a carbon and a hydrogen, which are fairly common if you think about it, will decrease the state by one. And every bond between carbon and a more electronegative element, such as oxygen, chlorine, bromine, will increase the state by one. Keep these three rules in mind as we go through the oxidation state of various alcohol structures. In a primary alcohol, the carbon atom that is bonded to the alcohol has an oxidation state of minus one. This is because it is bonded to two hydrogens, which decreases the state by one each, and it is bonded to an oxygen, which is more electronegative than the carbon, so it increases the state by one. So in total, this gives me a net state of minus one. In the secondary alcohol, the carbon atom is bonded to a hydrogen atom, which decreases the state by one, and the oxygen atom here increases the state by one. In total, this gives me a net oxidation state of zero. In the tertiary alcohol, the carbon atom is bonded to three carbons, which do not change the states at all, and one oxygen, which increases the state by one. Thus, tertiary alcohol's oxidation state is plus one. Aldehydes, ketones, and carboxylic acids are organic functional groups that are produced from oxidizing alcohols. These three functional groups are similar in the way that they all contain a carbon to oxygen double bond. The difference here, however, is what that carbon atom is further bonded to. In an aldehyde, this carbon atom is bonded to another carbon atom and the hydrogen atom at the end of the molecule. In a ketone, this carbon atom is sandwiched between two other carbon atoms as its neighbors. And in a carboxylic acid, the carbon atom is bonded to a hydroxyl group or a OH group at the end of it. It is important for you to take a moment to realize the similarities and differences and therefore be able to differentiate between these three functional groups. Oxidation of primary alcohol produces an aldehyde where the oxidation state goes from minus one to plus one. However, aldehydes can be further oxidized to produce carboxylic acid, which has a much higher state of plus three. Since the aldehyde in the middle can be further oxidized, usually the oxidation of a primary alcohol always forms the final product, which is the carboxylic acid. In this example, oxidation of one propanol, even though it produces propanol, the final product that we usually see is propanoic acid. Oxidation of secondary alcohols produces a ketone, whereby the oxidation state increases from zero to plus two. Since ketones cannot be further oxidized, this is always the final product of oxidation of a secondary alcohol. Finally, oxidation of, of tertiary alcohol produces no products as there's no reaction whatsoever. In other words, it is not possible to oxidize a tertiary alcohol. There are many possible reagents, otherwise known as oxidizing agents, we can use to oxidize alcohols. However, these are some common examples you are likely to come across. For strong oxidizing agents, we have acidified dichromate and acidified permanganate. The formulas of these two reagents are rather complex, but it is easy to remember them as they can be found in the NESA data sheet in the reduction potential table. As you can see, dichromate and protons, permanganate and protons. A weak oxidizing agent that we commonly see using organic chemistry is peridinium chlorochromate, PCC for short. A weak oxidizing agent such as peridinium chlorochromate or PCC is useful when you want to produce an aldehyde from oxidizing a primary alcohol. Remember that the oxidation of a primary alcohol, even though it does produce an aldehyde, it will further oxidize an aldehyde to produce a carboxylic acid. However, the use of PCC will stop the reaction at an aldehyde level as its weak strength is not able to oxidize the aldehyde into its carboxylic acid counterpart.